So, um, you know, I, I started this company called Sea Quotient uh, in 2010. Uh, the C stands for customer, so you know, IQ, EQ, CQ, you get the idea. Um, so uh, the reason I did that is because um, I sort of noticed that while, um, you know, personalization technology, uh, trying to personalize the marketing to a particular individual customer's sort of tastes and preferences, uh, while that has been talked about for a long time, and in fact, Amazon has had a, a recommendation engine from the mid-90s, uh, while on the one hand that was true, uh, on the other hand, when I was talking to retail executives, uh, I frequently would hear that um, you know personalization really wasn't helping all that much. Um, they were actually trying to personalize their email communications, they were trying to personalize their website visits, and so on and so forth, but they weren't really seeing a lot of sort of traction, a lot of value from doing those things. And for me, there was a bit of a sort of a cognitive dissonance. You know, on the one hand, all these people are saying it's great, it's been there for a long time. On the other hand, people are not seeing benefit. So I sort of kept pulling at the thread to try to understand what is going on, to resolve this sort of discrepancy. And what I came to realize is that uh, for a large segment of retail, in particular like the fashion apparel segment of retail, it turns out that most customers don't shop all that often. Um, in fact, you will find a small number of very loyal customers who shop many times a year, but the vast majority will only shop once or twice a year. So what that meant was that for the majority of your customer base, you didn't know a whole lot. So you didn't have a big data problem, you had a little data problem. And so, um, so that was sort of the founding thesis for C Quotient. And what I thought would be good to do is to actually um, you know, build a platform which would uh, take every interaction with a customer as something precious, right? As precious data, because by definition, we were in a little data regime. And so, you know, every time you come to the store and buy something, of course, we will, we'll make note of it. But if you come to the website and search for something, we'll make note of it. If you return something, we'll make note of it. If you open an email, we'll make note of it, and so on and so forth. So by being very careful and diligent about noting down the interactions a customer has with a particular retailer or an e-commerce site, we can actually create a very, very nice and detailed composite picture of what that person does and what they care about. And once you have that, then you can actually apply, you know, proven uh, algorithms for machine learning uh, from the world of recommender systems to, the, to this data set and thereby be able to sort of nudge people's shopping behavior incrementally in the right direction. Uh, and that ended up being really, really powerful. So, um, so we, you know, we built the company, uh, we had raised venture capital, we built the company, uh, we had really good success. Uh, and then, you know, uh, Demandware, which is uh, a company in Boston, uh, at the time, uh, I think the largest cloud-based e-commerce transaction platform in the world, um, they, they approached us with an acquisition offer, uh, and we said yes, and we became part of Demandware. Uh, and, and, the, and the reason why this acquisition was really interesting was because uh, Demandware offered a transaction platform, lots of e-commerce websites were running their businesses on the platform, and, um, and the revenue model was Demandware, for Demandware was that you know, for every dollar that gets transacted through the platform, they will get a few cents on the dollar, which meant that if they could use Sequotion technology to drive just a bit more revenue through the platform, it would just translate directly to their top line. So for, for, from that perspective, the, the, the economic case was very really obvious and compelling. From our C Quotient perspective, it was equally compelling because now by plugging into the Demandware platform, we actually get distribution to hundreds, thousands of e-commerce sites worldwide, as opposed to trying to sign up one, one site one by one. Uh, and then of course a year later, um, Salesforce acquired Demandware uh, for I believe 2.5, 2.6 billion, which at that time was Salesforce's largest acquisition. Um, and, uh, and Demandware became Salesforce Commerce Cloud, one of Salesforce's product clouds, Commerce Cloud, and C Quotient actually to this day is referred to as Salesforce Einstein for Commerce. Uh, Salesforce Einstein, as you might know, is Salesforce's AI platform, uh, and then the, the particular sort of sub subset of it that is for e-commerce is, is actually C Quotient. Um, so as we speak, uh, C Quotient is live on probably seven, eight, nine thousand e-commerce sites worldwide, and uh, and you know, and I know that for example, on just on Black Friday alone, the day after Thanksgiving, um, C Quotient probably sort of interacts. C Quotient technology probably sees and interacts with over a billion shoppers on a single day. Um, so that is sort of the story of C Quotient, how it ended up becoming part of the brand.